And Senator Hume. Thank you very much, Deputy President. It is an honour indeed to reflect this evening in this chamber on one of the most momentous events in the political history of our nation. For 75 years ago, on the 21st of August 1943, the Tasmanian electorate of Darwin elected to parliament Dame Enid Lyons. And the people of Western Australia elected Miss, uh, Mrs Dorothy Tangney to the Senate. Now, I'm certain that other speakers from uh, Dame Dorothy's party are better placed to honour her legacy in greater detail than I. And so I would like to devote my attention this evening to Dame Enid and the challenges and triumphs that characterise her place in Australia's history. Now, while Dame Enid is best known as Australia's first female parliamentarian, she certainly was not new to the demands of political life. As the wife of former Prime Minister Joseph Lyons and a dame, of course, in her own right, Enid Lyons undertook gruelling public speaking schedules in order to support her husband, both while he was Premier of, uh, of Tasmania during his seven years and, uh, sorry, and during his seven years as Australia's pre-war Prime Minister. Indeed, Dame Enid once reflected that the hardest thing she did in her life was to assume the role of the Prime Minister's wife. She would never an have um, anticipated nor wanted her apprenticeship to be so unexpectedly valuable, for her husband died very suddenly in 1939 and left Dame Enid a widow at the tender age of only 41. As she retreated into grief, uh, World War II was profoundly changing Australian politics and society, and particularly in regard to women's abilities and roles and contributions. Before that time, only a handful of women had been elected to Australian state parliaments. Indeed, the mere suggestion of female parliamentarians was still considered something of an experiment with an uncertain outcome. But attitudes were changing, and over the course of the war between 1939 and 1944, the total number of women employed rose by over a third. It was also at this time that the Women for Canberra movement emerged, inspired by the Women for Westminster movement in the UK. And in the midst of this social change in 1943, a vacancy arose in the seat of Darwin. And it was her daughter, in fact, that talked Damienid into running. So Damienid Lyons, local, widow, mother of, wait for it, 12 children, won the seat by 800 votes. And on entering parliament, Dame Enid already had both a political toughness and also a folksy charm that characterised her very unique style and personal appeal. Her speeches were known for both their humour and their sentimental nature. Indeed, Sir Robert Menzies said of her speeches that she could reduce me to tears about the state of a rail track. Dame Enid Lyons is known for being a trailblazer simply for being here. So it's easy to forget uh, and to, uh, to reflect appropriately upon her extraordinary achievements while in office, both for her country and specifically for Australian women and children. She passionately lobbied for improvements to maternal health care, increases to the widow's pension, the elimination of employment discrimination and her hallmark achievement, the extension of child endowment to first children. And she also fought to see legislation passed which secured citizenship rights for women after their marriage to foreigners, and she also raised allowances to service women so that they matched those of returned service men. Her electoral successes were also enviable. In fact, in 1946, she tripled her primary vote and quadrupled it in the 1949 election. And in the same year, Prime Minister Robert Menzies promoted her to Vice President of the Executive Council, making her the first woman to hold a cabinet position. She was indeed a force to be reckoned with, and it was only ill health, an undiagnosed broken pelvis and a car accident just prior to the 1951 election that caused her retirement. Her insights, though, her policy legacy, her wit and her wisdom endure, and much of it is timeless. Dame Enid Lyons once reflected that our nation was a land of promise and that we cannot afford to neglect some recognition of our past 
even though we gaze into the future. In a great nation such as ours, which values equality and where women continue to go from strength to strength, people often question why it remains so important to recognise the achievements of women specifically. There are two reasons why I believe it is so important to recognise those who went before us in this place. Firstly, trailblazers such as Dame Enid Lyons defy the misconception that women's presence in, our highest, or in the highest offices in our land is a form of tokenism, a convenient genuflection to feminist movements to ensure political appeal. Quite the contrary. Women like her and those who have come after have demonstrated that they have changed the discourse, changed the direction and set a course for a modern, forward-looking Liberal Party where all voices are heard and valued. Women bring to the political fray unique experiences and perspectives, but also an empathy and a shared lived experience and a toughness that, and a resilience Few men can understand, although I cannot in good faith point the finger of inadequacy here only at men. On this, Dame Enid sets the bar way too high. I don't think anyone here before or since has given birth to 12 children and sub subsequently sat in parliament for eight years on a broken pelvis. But this leads me to the second reason why it's so important to recognise and celebrate the women who have blazed the trail. For if we acknowledge and accept that the contribution of these women has made our country better, it logically follows that we now have a responsibility, indeed a patriotic duty, to ensure that that tradition continues. By being, a vocal, by being vocal about the impressive achievements of women past and present, we send a strong message to society and to the next generation. Women have so much to offer, and their contributions are not just valued, but they are needed and not just in areas of the traditional feminine domain. In my own party, I need only to look to the front bench, where we have women in leading in portfolios such as foreign affairs, finance and revenue, defence and jobs and innovation. Indeed, Prime Minister, um, the, indeed, Prime Minister and founder of the Liberal Party, Sir Robert Menzies, stated shortly before Enid Lyons' election, wherever a woman is willing and able to do some job, however unwomanly, that job might have seemed to be in the eye of convention, then there should be no barrier against that woman doing it. On the contrary, there should be active encouragement and direction. There is no equality quite so ennobling as equality of service. So in a political climate where many voters may remain distrustful and removed from their representatives, it falls to the heirs of Dame Enid Lyons to continue to beat the path on the trail that she blazed for the next generation of Liberal women, and also to lay paving stones of our own along that journey to a better nation. In her maiden speech, Dame Enid Lyons said, I believe very sincerely that any woman entering the public arena must be prepared to work as men work. She must justify herself not as a woman, but as a citizen. She must attack the same problems and be prepared to shoulder the same burdens. And these powerful words ring true now as they did then. So to the women in this chamber and to the women who aspire to be in this chamber or in the other place, we are equal, we are powerful and we serve this nation well. There is so much that we can take from the contribution to public life that Dame Enid made, and it has been a privilege to reflect on that this evening in this place. Thank you, Senator.